two amazing days together. Wow, it's been fantastic. It, it's a wonderful event at a wonderful venue. How will you be remembered in 30 days time? How will you be remembered in 30 months time? How could you be remembered in 30 years time? You'll be remembered for doing something different, for standing out from the crowd. You can watch, you can switch off and do something else. Or you can see the opportunity to be creative and when, you, when opportunity meets creativity, great marketing happens. Great marketing will happen. Here we are at our third business network live in lockdown. Um, I can't believe I'm saying we're doing another Business Network Live in lockdown, but um, we wanted to give you a little bit of hope that actually at some point we will all be back in a room together. You will get invited to the physical Business Network Live and we will all be in a room together. We will be able to drink, have a dance, hug each other for extended periods of time. And we will have um, inspir inspirational speakers like Jeff Ram at that session that we do live. We cannot yet tell you when it's gonna be, but it will happen. It will happen. Um, so again, thank you so much guys for joining us today. Um, we're gonna have a really good discussion. We've got a fully female panel today, I'm really proud to say. Um, and I promise to be not Piers Morgan and not Jackie Weaver either. I will not be kicking anybody out. So I want my panelists just to relax and enjoy the session. Um, and let's just say from the outset, you know, and acknowledge we're all feeling a little bit, how can we put it, meh at the moment. Um, what we want to do over the next hour with you guys at this time you've given up today on obviously a very busy day for everybody um, is talk about how can we take back a little bit of control. We all feel a bit disempowered at the moment in our lives, in our businesses, in our industry. So let's speak to some people today who are gonna talk about how they're surviving, because our theme today is survival and revival. How are they surviving um, this feels like never ending pandemic? And what are they gonna to do to revive and rebuild their businesses when finally we can open? Um, and I know over here um, in England, we're waiting for an announcement this afternoon from Boris. So please, please Boris, be kind. Um, but what are we gonna do when we reopen and how can we dig deep and find a little hour of motivation now? So without further ado, I want to start to introduce our panelists to you. So we're gonna start off by introducing the lovely Nikki Clifford. Hello, Nikki, are you there? Can you put your camera on? Hi. Hi, Hazel, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. You're looking really lovely. You are the blonde and balayage queen and you're rocking it today. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, some of you may know um, Nikki. Nikki did a few Instagram takeovers for us recently. Like I said, she's the blonde and balayage queen. She is one of our Weller UK and Ireland craft experts, and she does some education for us, which we love. Um, and more importantly, she is the director of NJ UK Hair and Beauty Salon in Derbyshire. Um, and we're just really pleased to have you with us today, Nikki. Thanks, Hazel. Thanks so much. I'm so excited to be here. Good. Um, and then we're going to move to our self-confessed, I didn't label her this, she labelled it herself, our hair geek, and that is Charlie Taylor. Hi, Charlie. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Hazel, how are you? I'm okay. Not too bad. Not too good. bad. All things considered. <laughs> All things considered, yeah. There's a lot to consider at the moment, isn't there? Um, Charlie, again, you will recognise her. She's one of our educators too. She does education for us here at Weller. Um, she is the owner of Charlie Taylor Salons in Scotland. She is a three-time Scottish hairdresser of the year. And something amazing you achieved, Charlie, is you were one of the first women to enter the BHA Hall of Fame, weren't you? So a lot to yeah. be proud of there. Yeah, absolutely busy lady. Um, thanks for joining us today, Charlie. And to. then on to our third guest is Nicola Tomlinson. Hi, Nick. 
Hazel, how are you doing? Yeah, you're not on mute and we can see you. Fabulous. I'm good, thank you. Um, Nick, I'm going to refer to Nick as Nick. We've got a Nicky as well. So just to keep it really clear, um, this is Nick. And Nick is the sound director at Daniel Gray Hair and Beauty Salon in Kendall. So thanks for joining us today, Nick. Um, I believe you started working there when you were 14 years old? I did, at this salon, yeah. It's my 31st year this year, so yeah, long, long time. Um, and you've got a big um, passion for team development and looking into new areas of the business. We're going to really get into that with you today. Like, what have you been doing to, yeah, look at your business in a different way as we've had all this time to do overthink things at the moment? Um, and then finally, our final panelist for today is Caroline Bell from Ireland. Hi, Caroline. Hi Hazel, how are you? There she is, rocking that lovely dusky pink hair. It looks beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, it's really nice to see you. I know you're on our Instagram a while ago, well not a while ago, actually only a few weeks ago, I think, having a chat with lovely Scott from Wella about your e-shop. So you've developed this whole new area of your business um, and you're repping for Ireland for us today, which is great. Um, we know you've got a massive passion for colour as well. So we really want to hear about how that turned into you having an e-shop. So um, we'll get into that a little bit today as well. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, I want to get straight into it, guys, because we always, this is our third one and we always run out of time. And I always find myself speeding up talking all the time. So let's get into it and start off with you, Nick, because I just alluded to a little bit there about you're really trying to take this time in survival time, this lockdown period, to look at areas of your business that maybe weren't so fine-tuned and needed a bit of oiling or a new perspective on them. Do you want to just take us through some of the things that you've been doing that hopefully we can impart some, yeah, some advice on, on others that are listening today? Yeah, so once I've got, uh, got me wobble over with, I decided that um, I joined, I started a management course um, through Weller actually, got me in touch with Simon Harris and um, I started a course, business course called My Salon Manager and that really gave me the kickstart to start thinking with this time off to look at everything that I wasn't really happy with with the salon, um, what jobs, what my job description was as well. And I thought, well, you know, which parts do I like, which parts I don't. And then I decided that my team had gone a bit quiet and I felt like I'm used to leading them and I've lost my purpose. So I felt like lost. So I think I, by reconnecting with the team and then talking to them every week about all the different areas that I wasn't happy with. And then as a group, we decided to change the things and get a new routine and new procedures in place. And I felt that's reconnected us all. I'm much happier with the procedures that are now going to take place in the salon that I never, ever had time to do. I didn't even have the headspace to even think about it. I didn't know where to start, but this time off, which we would never ever have had, as much as it's been stressful financially, um, it's been really good to get that headspace. And I think instead of just like a day off here and there to think and try and put something to action, you've had like weeks and weeks and days to actually really, really think and sleep on it. And that's been really good for me. So I'm raring to go actually. There's, oh, my head's like full of all these things that I want to do, but um, it's it's been really good. And I think for the team, it's been great to reconnect with them because I'm used to seeing them every day mm. and there's certainly nothing. Um, mm. And, you know, we've, we sort of do it in two groups. So I tend to have like the day people and then the mums I tend to talk to at night when they finish the schooling and yeah. that, that balance has been really, really good. So I, it's worked well. Yeah. Yeah. Having that, we've definitely had sustained periods, right. To get into our heads and our own feelings about what's going on. Talking about procedures, is there anything in that particular that you've tried to tackle procedure wise in the salon where you're like, it's not working. So I'm going to, it's broke. Let's fix it. Yeah, I, I feel like I started from the bottom. I yeah. think I'm going to start afresh. So we started with um, the, the client complaints or comments, and we're really good if something goes wrong and jumping in and trying to get everything right for the client. But it could be like the little things as well that don't that get missed or a comment. So we've definitely, no matter who answers the phone or where the comment goes to from, you know, the top stylist to the junior to the, you know, whichever receptionist it goes, it's always answered in 
this way and it's dealt with in this way. So I think we kept it simple at five steps, whether it was over the phone, a message through our social media, an email or at the chair. So we've, we've got it all documented now. And then we've just started on little things like that, working through um, my junior team are doing some topics every week and, and rescheduling everything as well. And they've been brilliant. So, and the beauty people have been doing their bits. So it's, it's been great. Wow. And then talking about like your team, I know you just mentioned there a little bit about the team and trying to keep them motivated. Thing. How are the team in this lockdown? Because I know from my own experience, you know, just with friends and family, I think it's really hitting people hard this third lockdown. I know we know what we're doing, but it's just the monotony, right, of every day. Like, how are you keeping the team? Like, what's your approach there for like helping them survive until they can get behind, back behind the chair? I think we're all a bit the same, aren't we? I feel like we're up one day, down the other, and they're very much on the roller coaster, like like ourselves. And yeah. uh, I can tend tend to cherry pick who who's up or who's down and then I sort of key into the ones that are going down and then the ones that are up, you know, try and a little text message, a quick phone call. And then these Zoom things have been quite good, handy checking in every week with them. And they get to see each other, which is really nice as well. Yeah. So that, that's, that's been a good way of doing that. But I think they're very, they want to date, they want, they want a plan, they want a date, you know, very much like us. And I think when it goes on, and on they sort of get a bit disheartened with everything so it's it's been nice to try and draw them in um I, I think when we talk about revival some of the ideas that I've got later that I think that are going to change and get the team ready for will be a good move uh, before we open yeah good and then Nikki can we talk to you a little bit about this whole like team motivation and like what are you doing to keep the team yeah, keeping close to them, but also like trying to energize yourself because as leaders, like you have to find your leaders in your salon, you have to find that energy from somewhere, don't you, to give it out to other people. So it'd be great, Nikki, to hear as well from you, like team wise, what are you doing in survival mode with them? <laughs> so, survival mode for me, I think, is getting myself back in the salon. And um, like Nicola said, a bit of a wobble for the first few weeks, you're a bit like it knocks your duck off. Yeah. Um, but then when you when you put your big girl pants on I think you're kind of you're in sort of you are in survival mode then and you get you really get stuck in and I think for me what's really helped is getting back in the salon um, and doing bits and bobs with my team on zoom so doing we've set like a bit of a road to where we do two weekly education zooms where uh, I come into the salon and I do like a bit of a mini course on bits and bobs and they've, they've absolutely loved that um, and then touching base with them on a personal level as well, not just as a team on Zoom, because I know that this lockdown, I think out of all of them, I think that, that my team have really, they've really struggled. So it is bringing them all back together, isn't it? And um, But like I say, for me, it really helps being in the salon because it actually feels like I'm at work when I'm kind of not, but I am. I feel like I've not worked so hard as I have now, if that makes any sense, because... I'm literally like we're doing a full salon restart because it's all the things that you never get a chance to do when you are behind the chair. You just don't get the time. You think, oh, I must do that. Oh, I must set out this. I must set out the KPIs. I must set out this. Uh, and you've got so much time on your hands to do it. So it is just really like getting stuck in and getting that done and, and just sort of, yeah, I think that's what helps me is being back back within the salon. Yeah, a salon looks beautiful. I can understand why you'd want to be in there every day because it reminds you, isn't it, what... I guess as well, what you're working towards. Whereas yeah. you haven't been to the sound for quite a few weeks, you might just, you know, forget, you know, that that space and the future that it has, and it will be busy and it will be bustling, bustling again at some point, hopefully soon-ish. Absolutely, absolutely. I think, um, I mean, that that's the, the great thing we've got to look forward to is it, we do feel so appreciated at the minute because we are very much needed when we reopen. I think. Um, they'll be they'll be queuing out the door which is great great for us um so yeah just working on the the sort of everyday running of the business and things like that and just getting it as you know the best we can and just making it as safe as possible because I think safety is such a massive thing at the minute it's making them clients feel comfortable when they come back so that they don't just come back through the door once they come they're going to keep coming back because they feel safe yeah yeah, for sure. And with those modules and things that you're doing, obviously, you know, your teams are very lucky. You know, Wella are putting a lot, a lot of education on our Instagram and things, and we're really, really trying to be conscious and doing that to keep everybody 
trying to keep them as inspired as possible and looking to the future <clears throat> while upskilling them. You know, what do you do when you have a team member that maybe doesn't want to engage in that education? You're noticing they're not dialing in. Are you, are you tackling that? And if you are, what, what are you doing? Are you just having a chat with them? Yeah, so my advice on that is it, it's, all, it's all well and good to say, saying this, but, you know, not everybody is going to want to log on to that Zoom meeting. Not everybody's going to be in that mind frame of wanting to put their camera on and things like that. And everybody deals with things in different ways. But, you know, as long as you're kind of, they know you're there for them on a personal level and, and you're not, it's not like, oh, why didn't you attend a Zoom meeting? It's, it is completely their own choice. Um, and some of them have, have kind of not really wanted to log on. And then when they have logged on, they've felt so much better because they've actually seen the team's faces and they've seen that sort of work family if you like and it makes them feel a lot more a lot more comfortable and like they're not on their own um, and the last zoom meeting we had actually quite was a little bit emotional at the end because they they were all talking about um how they felt and things like that and that was really nice because it was like a bit of like a little counseling session for for each other and that i thought that was that was really special yeah yeah, so it's nice to do that emotion bit rather. It's trying to get the balance, I guess, for you guys. It's like, we want to educate you and keep you inspired, but also let's talk about how we will feel. Let's talk about our emotions as well. Um, yeah, really, really important. And um, Charlie, just coming to you then on like positive, I know you're full of positive attitude and, you know, again, in this survival mode, what, what have you been doing up there in Scotland and how are your team feeling? How are you keeping them positive? Yeah, I mean, I think, honestly, I think things have been super super I, I know it's difficult all through the country but you know we've had these sort of tier systems in place and honestly in you know I'm not in major cities in Scotland so I'm not in Edinburgh and Glasgow and I'm in Perth and Dundee and when when the tier systems are in place I am telling you nobody is in the street I mean it's like it's just yeah it's just like unbelievable I mean we we all have got such a big climb. Even once this magical day comes when we're all back at work and everything, I've just, in fact, just at the top of my screen, Sturgeon confirms return of tier system. <laughs> you know, so you just know that you're going to go back into this whole sort of like, because what happened in Scotland is that, like, for example, you know, I've got I've got a salon in Dundee and a salon in Perth. But that means that if you're a client um, in that region, you're not allowed to move into any other region. So it could just be a few miles away and you're not allowed to move. So you've got to kind of draw all your clients from this really small, you know, basically what I'm saying is it's really difficult, really difficult. Um, what happened after the last lockdown was that we had like, it was like Christmas. It was like Christmas all over again. It was like super busy. And then it just fell off a cliff because the tier system changed and people weren't allowed to travel and all of this sort of stuff. So, you know, I think motivation is it's a tricky one. You know, I think I think um, keeping the team motivated is hard because, you know, everybody's in this sort of frame of mind whereby I think I think they're bored. Yeah. Really, I think they're bored. They've got so much time on their hands that they're actually board and um you know the the message that i've given out and i think this is really important as a salon owner is that i am here for you that's the, that's the message um we had loads and loads of zooms in the first lockdown far less zooms in the second lockdown however you know i have allowed my team to pick and choose what training they want to do. So, I mean, fortunately, thank you very much, Well, There's been some amazing education and I've just put it out there and said, I, I gave them all the courses and said, come back to me and tell me which ones you want to do. And to be fair, if they've said they were going to do it, they, they will do it. But that way they've kind of chosen themselves what they want to do. Um, this Friday, we're just having, I'm not going to give too much away because if they're listening, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to give away my secrets. Yeah, yeah. We're having a... a we're having a pub quiz and we've got a few like games that they're all going to freak out about. And then when that's all over, I'm having a pizza delivered to each of their houses oh. so that it just kind of lifts the mood a little bit. Do you know, I just kind of feel like sometimes when I'm doing Zooms with them, it's like, oh my God, you know, what is she going on about now? Um, so I've kind of kept that more to a minimum this time. Mm -hmm. 
However, the only other thing I would say that is that several of my team members, because these lockdowns have been so long, some of them have been saying, look, I'd like to cram all my education or more education when we know we're just about to open. I want to cram it. So I'm going to do a session every day or something. So it's all fresh and new. I think they suffered last time because we were quite full on in the first one. It's like, right, Zoom meeting today and, you know, let's do it. Yeah. And, and then they're just kind of saying, oh, God, we've forgotten it all because we can't put it in practice. And so what we're doing is we're keeping contact. The, the message is 100 percent. I mean, it couldn't be clearer. I'm here for you if you need me. Phone me, call me, talk to me, whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. However, when we know we're going to open, we're really going to ramp it up. And just, yeah, loads of education, um, loads of meetings and just kind of keep it fresh for when we know we're going to open. It's that whole sort of thing where you kind of like, are we going to get open? Oh, no. Are we going yeah. to get out? Oh, no. Oh, we're only going to be in tier four. Oh, God. So, yeah, there you go. That's and my, that hits, my take on it. That hits the motivation, doesn't it, to want to do the education and, and things when they don't. They're like, well, why? I don't know if I'll be back to work in April, May 2028. Yeah. I don't know. Why should I do this education? So I think you're, you seem like you're approaching it very much like one size doesn't fit all. And the power yeah. in saying to people, I am there for you. Sometimes that's all it is. Like, I'm here if you want to speak to I me. Mean, uh, honestly truly my guys love education they love it and they're they're you know they're going to pick what they want to do and brilliant when? give me a and bit when? of feedback you know let me know how it went and and just letting them be fairly independent to be honest yeah yeah and then any other tips like survival that you focused on charlie like i know you've got your you've got your e-shop as well and i know you've been doing a lot of tutorials and things on your instagram lives but anything else you've been doing yeah, I mean, 100%. I mean, the, the one thing that that this whole horrid, horrid situation has done is it's given, it's given us all, whether you're an employee, an employer, whatever, it's given us time. And time is probably the most precious commodity in life, isn't it? It's given us time. And I think a lot depends on what type of person you are, you know, one thing that I, I know that I am good at is I'm good at self-motivation. So I don't have any trouble motivating myself. And I think if you are a, a, a salon owner or, or a leader, that is one key thing that you just have to be able to do. You know, you can't really get up and, and, and think, do you know what, I actually can't be bothered doing anything. I never, honestly, those thoughts just never go through my head. It's like self-motivated, get up in the morning, right? What am I going to achieve today? What do I want to achieve in the whole week? And so I kind of set myself a lot of goals. And I find that that in a situation like this is really important. I actually even think I'm going to run out of time to get everything done that I need to get done, which is if we, could crazy. Bottle, if we could bottle that Charlie that whole I always get up and feel like motivated because I think that is what we're all really struggling with and when we're giving energy to other people in our team as well so is there anything in particular that really gives you that yeah I want to get out of bed and I want to like crack on with my yeah. day and achieve something what is it yeah because time and life is just such a gift do you know it's a gift and and to to not make the most of it in any situation I just couldn't live myself. I, I have to be like, right, okay, let's let's do this. Yeah. And I, I suppose a lot depends whether you're a glass half full or glass half empty person. You know, mine is full. And, you know, if I can have it overflowing, then I will. So I've just kind of kept that mental attitude going through the whole thing. And that what that results in, okay, so that sounds great, but what does that actually result in? What it results in for me and our business is that uh, I'm in the salon every day, six days, six days out of seven. I went for a long walk yesterday, but sometimes I'll do seven days. Yeah, this week I did six. We're coming out of the salon, my husband and myself are coming out of the salon quarter past eight, half eight at night, and, and back in again the next day. And it's everything from stripping the salon to make sure it's absolutely spotless, to sitting in things that I find a little bit more boring, but I know it has to be done. It's like reviewing all our systems. <laughs> you know, when you're a hands-on hairdresser, it's kind of hard to be desk bound, but I've forced myself to do stuff like that. And yeah, working on new projects, 
working on brand new projects and just, just using this time to strengthen the business. That's my loyalty to my team. My loyalty to my team is that we're going to reopen and we're going to reopen bigger and better than when we went out. So whether we do or not, a lot depends on these tier systems and all the rest of it, but the intention is there. Mm. That's, that's it. It's a positive mental attitude. I love it. I forgot about positive mental attitude. <laughs> it's been so long, um, but I'm sure many of the audience are, are, are the same. Um, thanks, Charlie. Um, talking about like new um, areas and things like that, Caroline, can we come to you and just talk about, yeah, just briefly your e-shop and what you did? Because you didn't even sell products. You didn't recommend online, did you? And then lockdowns happened and the pandemic happened. And now look at you. Yeah, yeah. It was the best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you know what, Hazel? It was it gave me the time when our business closed, like what Charlie was saying there, like just to get this time has been phenomenal, really. And just to use it to our advantage and when when our salon closed it gave me the time because I work full-time on the floor so I had the time to sit back and have a look and I suppose it started off originally just trying to help my clients salon clients just to get through lockdown manage their hair and it's something that I just got sucked into and it has been amazing to get up every morning and have a whole day to put my energy into another side of my business that I've wanted to do for years, but never got the gift of time to do it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that, that, that's, that's where it began. And it, it went from helping our own clients to, to just growing from that really. But, um, yeah. So yeah, because um, it started off, didn't it, by you just doing little tutorials on, it, were you doing Instagram lives and, and things like that? Yeah, and you were just showing people how to wash and dry and style your hair. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it sounds pretty simple, but like for a lot of our clients who would be coming into the salon, it's not that simple when we're gone. And it was a great way to keep in contact with our clients whilst the salon was closed. And there was the fear that we didn't know how we were going to go back after the first lockdown. We didn't know what business was going to come back. We didn't know were people going to be too frightened to come out into the salon. So I needed another income on the side to, to, survive. <laughs> yeah, to survive, basically. And also whilst we were closed to have an income. But more so I was focusing on when we were going back after the first lockdown, maybe some of our older clients that we would lose a lot of them. I had felt that they might be too nervous to come out. So it was to build something to carry my business through what, what we know now is going to be a year or more. So just to have that extra income coming in. And um, thankfully I did because here we are a year later and we still have another while ahead of us. So it is, it's giving me something to run alongside my business that I don't have to worry about um people's fears as much now as it turned out there was no fear once we opened the only fear was that they wouldn't get an appointment so it has turned into a sideline for still a busy salon so it's been amazing absolutely amazing yeah because I remember Scott talking to you about you don't have a huge following like you know a lot of people would think oh you've got such a small following like why why kind of bother but it just it grew and grew didn't it the amount of people that were interested the engagement levels of your content even though you don't have huge following yeah I have a very small following and I, I probably started off at the start with five or six hundred people following me and they would have been salon clients mm -hmm. so they and I only put up a picture here and there on Instagram. I wouldn't be a great techie person. Um, so it would have been just pictures here and there. And then word traveled. So, I mean, I still don't have a massive following, about two and a half thousand people, but they all came for the hair help. And yeah. that's what they're there for. So it's it's almost, it's an online salon really now yeah. is what I'm running. And it's amazing because you get to connect with people every day. You get to connect with your existing clients, with new clients, with prospective mm -hmm. clients, mm -hmm. with people who have issues maybe and haven't been able to find somebody to help them with those issues. Mm -hmm. So it has been 
a great platform to be able to give out all this advice to people. Yeah, and it, I guess it adds to your feeling of empowerment, you know, like I spoke about at the beginning, you know, that over here as well, we're talking about we need things to empower us, like the VAT levels coming down and things like that. But for you, you've taken this kind of into your own hands, done it, and it's your point of difference, you know, versus though we've talked about it before again on other lives, but it is the point of difference versus going to a big, you know, purely e-com hair player where there will be a thousand different masks on there for your dry, damaged hair, but they'll never have a hairdresser. Well, don't, I hope they're not listening, but they won't have their hairdresser. They won't telling them, right, this is what you should have. Would you like this one or this one? What do you think is better for you? So I think it's great that you've um, you've taken yeah. that power and done that. And that's your yeah point of difference versus um, buying online. That, that's what I am seeing a lot of. I have people coming to me that they have bought, but haven't a clue how to use it. So yeah. it does sound really simple going on, showing somebody how to shampoo their hair or how to apply a mask properly. Yeah. And this sounds so trivial to us as yeah. hairdressers, but to somebody out there, it, it's massive information for them and it can be life changing. And yeah. again, it helps us going back that their hair is in great condition because we know they've been using proper products yeah. properly. Even yeah. Better. And we can like, before we reopen, I spend a week or two getting people to prep their hair before we get back into the salon. So we don't have them coming in with the root sprays on or, you know, hair not treated properly. So we're, we're the results then that we can produce on the salon floor were amazing when we do get back because we have the hair prepped and ready for us. Yeah, and I'm sure it's a lot of work and things. And I know we've got some Instagram lives coming up about um, profitability of e-shops. But I think there's always that piece as well of it's keeping in touch with your clients. It's keeping them close to you and getting them hooked on and helping them discover professional retail. Because until they try it, they just won't realise what they're missing out on. So I think you've got, you're going to have that return on investment when you come back to the salon, right? You've got all these yeah. new people hooked on, um, on professional hair care and seeing the benefits. And then you've also got that new client base as well, because I know you've managed to attract some new people because I'm guessing word of mouth as well. You know, this lady knows what she's talking about. And also, Hazel, a lot of people wouldn't have any home care at home when they're used to going to the salon every week. So they've actually never had to buy home care products because they're coming into the salon to work. Yeah. So it's a whole new thing for them. So to be able to educate them on that, you're, you know, is amazing. And did it cost a lot to set it up, um, Caroline? You know, did you do a Shopify and it was, yeah, how much was it like set up? If you're happy to share with us. Yeah, um, like I listen to the girls here and you're all amazing businesswomen. I'm probably the worst businesswoman ever. I have no idea as in how profitable it is. I It covers my bills and I'm happy with that. Um, I would have started off with a small retail shelf in the salon and I've expanded my lines and in my spare bedroom at the minute. So anything I am making, I am reinvesting into the business. My website was, it's not Shopify. Again, I'm a tech phobe. I, <laughs> I'm probably the most unassuming person now to be running something like this because I haven't a clue really that's why we love this story because we have people going I don't want to set up a new shop it's a nightmare I don't have to do that and you're like I didn't know how to do it and look at me so that's why we love this story. and I still don't really know how to do it if I'm being perfectly honest I got a website set up originally that was going before any of these lockdowns came in and I only set up a website because I needed it for my profile you needed a, a website address so I, I had that there. I didn't even know how to get into the back end of it. And then all of a sudden in March, I was left with, right, you know, you, you've got to sell on this. So I uploaded my products on there. Now I tell you, I can run the back end of a website, Good no bother at all. And it's just all learning as I go, which I'm loving because I'm learning so many new skills as well. Yeah, but we're not saying it costs you tens of thousands of pounds to set no. up absolutely not yeah no, absolutely not I, like I haven't taken out like to open my business I would have taken out a loan first day all those years ago with this I haven't anything I'm making I'm putting back into it mm -hmm. and the website we were lucky here in Ireland there was some amazing grants um, that yes. were available for small businesses and I did get that grant to improve my website yeah 
Right. Yeah, we do hear that a lot. I, I was listening to something last week where Ben Brown was saying, I'm just going to up my business and I'm going to take it to Ireland because they're getting so much support over there. And you've just acknowledged that you are getting a lot yeah. of support over here. And I think I think in England and Wales and Scotland, we possibly feel a little bit different here, but it's fantastic that you are getting that support, support in Ireland, the industry is getting that support. If we could just move and talk a little bit about revival. And if I can come back to you, Nick, just talking about, you know, what are you excited for when we do get the go ahead to open and what are you doing to make sure that revival of your business goes off you know without a hitch and yeah you have great success so one of my thoughts um is to i think everybody's been in gray sweatpants joggers no hair and makeup you know the a lot of the younger team are like getting up late and going to bed at like god knows what time in the morning totally and I think everybody is getting ready for the light nights. They want to ditch the joggers. They want to ditch this long hair. And I think short hair bobs are going to be coming fast and furious. People are ready for a re revamp. And what I want to do is concentrate the team on being ready for that. So you look at all these short haircuts, look at colour, and for them to be really on the game, Mm -hmm. So not working, like last time we worked like ridiculous hours and exhausted by the end of it. And then I think it was Charlie said that um, then you hit a flat, don't you? Because you've done everybody and then everybody's like, what's going on? And, and I think to exhaust the team is, is crazy. And I don't want to do that this time. I want them to be ready every day that they're here. And we might have a mad couple of weeks, but then go back to a little bit more normality but be ready for giving these clients something new, a change, be ready for it, you know, get the bookings correct, get the juniors ready. Um, yeah, I think it's exciting. I think colour cutting is going to be a real strong point for us moving forward. Yeah, and it's great to hear that from others as well about, I know Akin from Hob very much is all about, God, when we get our clients back, let's inspire them and excite them with shorter styles because you know, for us, we know it drives frequency. The shorter the hair, the often we're going to see them. We know frequency over the last few years has really taken a nosedive. So let's bring back that craft to the cutting. So I think colour, we talk about colour a lot, a lot, but let's try and let, yeah, give them inspiration to have those shorter stars. I mean, you're the perfect um, role model, obviously. Um, so yeah, how can we do that? I mean, I can't wait to lob mine off. It's getting way too long, but it's great to hear that, yeah, you are you want to prepare the team to be able to inspire their their clients with let's not just have a trim let's go for a whole new look and yeah let's go a bit shorter because we're done with this long oh, I'm done with my long hair at the moment um so that's great to hear um anything else for revival I think um one of the things is uh, getting a bit of like work-life balance uh, one of the things I sort of tend to think that everybody's going to be wanting to book holidays go out yeah barbecues and you know, I, I sort of looking spoke to the. I put a question out to the team about finishing earlier um, on a Saturday, and that none of them have responded. I think they think it's a trick question, <laughs> and they're, they're sort of thinking she's definitely gone mad. It's all this time off, um, because I just think people are going to be busy doing connecting people again, and you know they'll be having them barbecues. Let's go out for tea. Let's go Manchester. You know wherever. Yeah. They're and anywhere this might take a bit of a nose dive like after lunchtime so looking at them actually being able to go to these things as well mm -hmm. and maybe converting their hours to somewhere else and rejigging things and you know be more flexible with your hours basically you're saying yeah more of a life work balance rather than being tied to the chair like set you know i mean obviously yeah. hours so that was another thing that i was looking at that they haven't come back to me yet um, and training again and we've used the well and learn lounge for the people that I think it was Charlie kept it quite flexible for them to use what they wanted to do um, but I think we are practical people and online has been great but I think actually getting back into academies and studios and like getting the team out of the building and to meeting new people I'd, I'd like to look that that would happen shortly in the future that they can go back and get that independence and that um, different learning that's not in the salon and not at a screen, sat at a screen. Basically. Exactly. I know. I think we'll see this big migration away. I know we've seen this big migration to digital, you know, and we've gone, we've leaped years ahead in digital education, but 
who knows it might come back towards you know face to face and I know we'd love to have our, our studios full um because face there's nothing like face-to-face -face education right as great as digital is I think we all just will crave that and I really hope that we do um Nikki coming to you what are you excited about for revival what's going to be new uh NJ UK when your clients step back in and for the stylists as well um lots of things really because like I said I've spent too much time in here doing bits and parts and renewing absolutely everything because I'm like that um, but one of the main things for me was when we came back after the first lockdown was that the plastic waste, waste didn't sit right with me with how much waste we are actually putting into landfill our salons such as like your colour tubes and things like that. So one of the things that we've been looking at more so is to become a lot more sustainable because I think as, as salons like I say we are we do impact a lot to sort of what goes to landfill and what goes in the ocean so uh, there's a really good initiative set up by the Green uh, Sal Green Salon Collective, um, which is a company that do zero landfill waste. So we're partnering with them basically to become a lot more eco-ethical -eth as a salon um, and to make sure that, you know, that because it's always in the back of the, your mind, you know, when you throw like a colour tube in the bin, you're like, it just doesn't sit right. This just, we get through a lot, a lot of waste in the salon. Mm. Um, and it's such a great thing that literally just came out more, quite recently, I believe. Um, and I'm so happy that that's something brand new that the team are well on board with as well, because they're all, you know, very much the same at home when it comes to recycling and things. So that that's one new thing, becoming a bit, bit more sustainable as a salon. Yeah. Um, and we're introducing a brand new range as well that we do, uh, which is the Weller, Weller exclusive range, uh, which is fantastic. Like I've been using it a little while now and um, it's a great brand. It's cruelty free. It's vegan, again, ethical. So all the packaging is 100% recyclable. So for us, that's a massive, massive thing because there is no planet B, as we do say. So um, that's something that we're really proud of coming back as well. As you can see, there's a bit more green in the salon. I'm quite a black and white kind of salon. It's always been quite clean looking, very black and white. And now we've got the botanicals and things like that to make it appear, you know, more sustainable. So that's, that's something I'm really excited about. Yeah, it looks like you're going to be the perfect salon for we do with all your green and your plants everywhere. And it's exciting to hear how you're going to be wanting to attract that because the new, the, the younger generations are, and even, you know, older generations, one in two people are buying eco-ethical now or eco-ethically concerned. So what are you, what is your salon doing to make sure that you're playing to those concerns? And it looks like you're really trying to brand the salon in that way as well, which again, it's about point of difference, isn't it, from the salon down the road? And that's, that's fantastic that you're that you're doing that and I'm sure your team as well will be it will make them feel better about you know what they're doing every day throwing away you know millions of tubes of color and things it, it, it even at home I, I think my recycling fills up so quickly so I can only imagine every day in the salon what the amount of things that you're throwing away so exciting to hear that you're uh, partnering with the Green Salon Collective and if anybody else wants to find out just google them we've got a special rate for Weller um, and it is part of the the we do launch that we're doing at the moment so um do Google it and have a little look. Um, so yeah, sustainability is going to be a key drive for you and going to be something new that you're forging towards when you reopen. Anything else? And will you be charging a green fee? I've just had a question come up, Nikki, actually. Yeah. Are you going to be charged? Because obviously there's a, a cost to use the Green Salon Collective. Will you be charging your clients a fee so that you're not having to take that, that cost yourself? Yeah, definitely. Um, the Green Salon Collective say that on average, um, their costs are like one pound per client. So we're going to have a green fee, which is built into every every client at the end of the bill. Um, yeah. So they're kind of absorbing absorbing that as well. But I think, to be honest, I think the clients are going to be quite happy to pay a pound to make ensure that they're not um, adding to landfill. I think. Yeah. Um, you it is a great thing to be honest and it's we've we've got a post covid charge anyway which is like part of the revival coming back and um you know i think it's kind of expected now isn't it you know we've yeah. we've took a hit having eight months out of out of the year closed yeah. um you know an extra three pound or an extra pound is is kind of nothing yeah um, when you look at what we've lost i think you know yeah. And also, if you look at what the, the industry's lost, you know, we keep seeing all the 5,000 salons will never reopen again. There are going to be a lot less salons. And I think people really value the hairdressing industry. So let and their local salon, not even the industry, they just 
they you know value their local salon so good for you for taking that decision to say do you know what we are if you want us to survive and be on the high street for you then we are gonna have to put our prices up so even after lockdown three you're putting your prices up yeah hell yeah yeah good yeah good to hear yeah fab um Let's just say, Charlie, can we come back to you a little bit about, because I know you've diversified, thank you, Nikki, um, in the salon and what, what areas you work in. So do you want to have a little chat to us about that, Charlie? Yes, indeed. I mean, I think the, the revival thing really is, for me, it's kind of ongoing. It's not, it's not a case of, right, when, we, when we're back, it's very much a case of now. And I think revival, we've, we've talked quite a lot about about our teams and how we're keeping them motivated and you know the the I guess the trust that they have in you as a leader and an employer to make sure that they're going to be okay and of course that is super super important um, however I am giving a lot of messages out to clients as well and I view that actually as part of our revival you know sort of being able to survive at the end of all this so I, I am communicating a lot with clients. I mean, during the first lockdown, it was more, I literally was phoning people, uh, clients and just saying, how are you? Are you okay? Um, slightly less of that this time, but the messages that I'm giving out via um, our database, um, just bringing, you know, I write, I actually write personal messages. I know a message isn't personal when you're sending it to thousands and thousands of people, but but it, it is a personal message from me saying, this is what we're doing. This is how the business is looking at the moment. This is how long we've been closed, seven months. You know, I think even, even a client reading that will think, oh my God, you know, out of 12 months, they've been shut for seven months of it. It's like, it's a, it's a tough call, you know? So I've been kind of keeping our clients up to date with what's going on. And I think, Although there has to be that trust thing that your team are trusting that you're doing everything you can to make your business survive this. I think clients want to know that too. And I think that's part of, you know, people believing that you're going to be there at the end of this. And I think that's really important. And that's something that I think, although we've got lots of plans for when we go back, I think now is a really good time to be putting that message out to clients that, that you know you're going to be there at the end of this because unfortunately the bare fact is I mean I think there are facts and figures out there but you know some salons are just not going to survive um no absolutely and I know like you know I've seen a lot of things about um salon owners like Sphere Hilton things saying be honest with your clients as well tell them what it's going to take for you to be there when they want to pick up the phone and make their appointment and that yeah. might mean a 10 percent price increase that might mean 15 pounds on every single service but give them the option because you know you there are certain services in your community that you want to be there when we come out of lockdown um so be transparent and be honest with them and keep in touch with them i think it's good to keep them in touch with the reality yeah, absolutely. And I, I think I think the other thing that that we're going to work on when we've got our team back, we've been working on our in salon systems, you know, there's just all the things that make your salon run and your team run on a on a day to day, week to week, month to month basis with with one to ones and group meetings and team meetings. And we're looking at all of that again, just to try. I mean, you can always do better. You can always do better. And I think you know, looking at all of these systems, my biggest message to my to my teams, because I think it's really important to remember that when you're a salon owner, there's only one of you. However, you've got 30 members of your team and it's all very well for you to be all sort of like, oh, this is, you know, but it's a, it's actually about them and how they put themselves across to to clients. And the biggest message we've we've had many many salon conferences over the years many many and they are all very sort of motivational and everything but the biggest thing that that i the best thing that i can do for the team and for the business is encourage our team to believe in themselves i think that is a really major and anything that you can do to help each individual member of your team believe in themselves i think is super important because actually if we all look at our teams they are really talented people they're young and they're talented they're creative and they're damn good at their jobs 
And I feel that sometimes that youth doesn't have the, the confidence to believe that they are as good as they are. And so a lot of my time is going to be spent making sure that our team actually really, really believe they are that good. Yeah. Uh, does that does that make any sort of sense? Yes, yeah, it does. And I think it links really nicely to um, having that confidence and believing in yourself. You have to be resilient as well, because you're going to take a lot of hits during your life and during lockdown where you're not demonstrating those amazing skills. And I think resilience is a really key part. And I know that on the Weller Instagram, we've got a lot of sessions on our IG TV live with the resilient hairdresser. But I think you're absolutely right, trying to reinstill that confidence, but give them the tools. And resilience is a tool, right? To feel great about yourself. It's like empowering them. It's like empowering empowerment, them. Yeah. empowerment. You know, it's like you are this good. You know, you are amazing. So I think really that's that's a massive, massive part of what is going to happen from whenever we get open uh, forever, really. You are that good. This is how good you are. Believe it. And then that then has to transfer to the client. You know, I'm going to, you know, we also, it's been actually, ladies on the on the panel, it's been very, very interesting listening to you all because um, it's just nice to hear what other people do, isn't it? Um, however, you know, it's interesting because I also have really powered up our online store and, you know, we're going through well a masks, colour masks, like can't keep them in stock, literally. That's that's how much we're selling them. And, you know, I think it's interesting because if we were in the salon, would we be selling as many of them? Perhaps not, you know, because it comes down to the power of suggestion from an individual team member. And actually, on an online shop, clients are making their own decision about what they want to buy, you know. And these masks have just gone flying off the shelves, which is just absolutely yeah. Yeah, great. if you haven't got well a colour fresh mask on your Instagram and your social channels, where have you been? Get them on there because the <laughs> ones that have, or look at Charlie. Charlie's done some nice tutorials on it on her Instagram. But yeah, it's uh, you're definitely missing a trick there if you haven't got colour fresh masks. So you're not talking them at the moment for sure. No, I mean at the end of the day, exciting times ahead. You know that there there will be exciting times ahead, and and perhaps perhaps we all have learned lots of things about our lives and ourselves that maybe are lessons that we would never have learned if this hadn't happened. So yeah, onwards and upwards and let's see what happens next. Thank you for that positivity. And Caroline, can I come back to you just um, quickly? I've got so many questions on, um, yeah, which platform are you using for your shop? I know you said it's not Shopify. You've actually put your Instagram handle on here, haven't you? And it's at the hair salon. Yeah, it's at the, at the at the at the hair salon dot ie. So if you've got if I'm not covering all your questions, guys, because I can see a lot in the chat for Caroline on this eShop, then feel free to direct message her. She's just at home, probably for the next eight to nine weeks. So she can she can uh, if, as long as you're all right with that, Caroline. Well, absolutely. I spend my day talking into my phone, so that's good. Fine. Good. Um, and then anything, yeah, particularly survival when you come back. So we know you're you're quite happy at the moment at home, and you're just waiting for that day to reopen. When you get back into the sound, anything uh, revival-wise, um, Caroline, from you? Yeah, um, I definitely want to take all this with me back into the salon and keep it going and have it running alongside my salon. And it's something that I want to bring more to the salon floor as well, because the benefits that people are getting from scalp care or from promoting thicker, healthier hair is amazing so I've never had the time to spend 20 minutes speaking to my clients one-on-one on on the salon floor with that I want to build that time into my appointments going back so that it's going to be a whole almost a holistic view to their hair and what they can do in between services as well so I, I definitely want to bring all this with me back Great, fantastic. And we could all do with um, a bit of a boost to our retail and service uh, treatments in, in salon. So it's great mm-hmm. that, yeah, you can continue that when you get back in and lead by example with your team as well, I'm sure. Um, we've got some other questions here, ladies, and I think we've got um, a few killer questions that um, our tech guy Rob's going to put up for us in a moment. Um, Nikki, can I ask you quickly, where are your screens from? You know, those beautiful, very we do branded, eco-ethical looking screens with the plants. Oh, now testing you yeah i think if you drop you drop me a message i'll um i'll send you their instagram handle um, there you go i saw these in the shard restaurant 
um, oh. that they have them between the tables. But you can literally, like, you have them made, they're in between glass. Um, and they're, they're fake, obviously, so you don't need to wash them or anything. But they just, they look really beautiful, like, in between the stations because they don't make them too closed off. So they're not too private between client's client, but they're, they are in a way, like, they give you that safe day, but you can still see what's going on because you know your clients like to have a little nosy around, don't they? Yeah, they look really well, great. We love them. Because I'm not, I'm not sure right now off the top of my head the, li- the name to them because I've had them a little while now. Don't worry, if people go to your Instagram page, I'm sure they can drop you a DM and you can let them know um, where you got them from, the suppliers. Hopefully it's someone nice and local, supporting local business. Um, Let's have a look at some questions that I may have missed um, because I think they might be coming up. Here we go. The ones that nearly got away, the last few questions. Um, Let's start with that one then. What would you do differently if you... Let me move you guys out of the way. What would you do differently if you knew then what you knew now? Let's go to while we've got you on here. I can see Nikki. What would you do differently um, if now? You know what I'm trying to say. I can't get my words out. It's always happening. What would I do? It's Monday. Like before, maybe before the pandemic started, if you knew differently, would you do anything differently? I don't know. I feel like I've really utilised my time well, the downtime. I feel like I probably would have done the same thing, but probably knowing what I know now, I would probably consider um, something similar to what Nick said, where we're looking at a bit more like extra work-life balance for us and the team and doing more stuff as a team and, you know, things like that that you don't really get much time to do because you you don't appreciate it as much as when you don't have the quality time together um so i think yeah we'll definitely make a lot more effort to um have more time as as a team family if you like and a bit more time out yeah yeah i think everyone's realizing that from this 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 closure time um nick anything from you if you could do anything differently would you have amped up anything that you've been doing that you'd want to do it more earlier um got my salon targets and individual targets and systems into place a bit before now um, I think you need to just, as salon owners, not feel guilty for taking the time off to do things like that. And I think that's been my, you know, I feel like I have to be here all the time or with clients or I, I'm maybe not managing my time well enough. And I feel like now, actually, you need the headspace more than anything. So actually, if I have to take two days off there to do this, well, a week, whatever it would take to to, you know, or help that individual and meet them off the shop floor or somebody else off the shop floor or whatever it is. I think like what Nikki was saying is you can't do everything and, you know, you can't do everything in that time of work either. So I think it's, it's that time out and trying to get that balance. For yeah. Everyone. So it's not feeling guilty, not relenting to the guilt about not being on the salon floor, especially when you reopen and there's so much to do on the salon floor, still taking some time to take a step back and say, right, I need to plan yeah my business as well I'll take that time yeah um charlie anything you do differently or earlier I, mean, I, I think i just agree with the rest of the girls really in that you know whatever it is that you have in you that 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 got you to the point where you start up your own business or you start your new online shop or whatever it is i think um i've certainly rediscovered a little bit of that person because I've set up two separate businesses while I've been on lockdown, which I haven't had time to talk about, but there you go, I meant to talk about it, I haven't. But anyway, um, yeah, I've set up two two different businesses whilst I've been on lockdown. And and in a funny sort of way, when you're doing hair all the time and you're looking after your team and you're doing looking after your clients, all that sort of stuff, you kind of lose who that person is. And the minute I had time, that person re-emerged, it's like, you're a little bit entrepreneurial and think oh I can do this and I'm going to do that and I have so yeah it's quite interesting the person that you discover so yeah I think I'm in agreement with everyone that I will allow myself just a little bit more time to to be that that person and just briefly what are the two businesses Charlie that you started Oh, well, one I can't talk about just now because it's under wraps. Right, <laughs> it's the under other one then, the other one. Issue. And the other one, actually, uh, to be fair, I didn't set that up in lockdown, but I've just been able to concentrate on it more. And it's a wig business. You know, we 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 sell wigs, basically. It's not, nothing unique, but, you know, it just, it just has allowed me to um, concentrate more on it. And, you know, that has absolutely benefited us. So, yeah, it's all about time, isn't it? 
and Caroline, just quickly from you, anything you'd do differently? An IT course, ideally. <laughs> I don't think you need to, Caroline, to be honest. You know, I'm, yeah. Just... I would have done everything a little bit earlier, Hazel. Um, I, I started working with a mentor recently. I should have done that at the very start. Um, I've started working with a social media company. I should have done that at the very start. So... I suppose I would have done it all a little bit sooner if I knew then what I know now. And the last one, what changes will you make to client appointment and prices post lockdown? Can I come to you first, Nikki? Because you seem very confident about, yeah, I'm going to be charging more, and especially with your green salon levy that you're going to be charging. You know, a lot of people don't feel as confident to put that on their client when they come to the reception desk and, and they're paying. Um, why, should, um, why should we expect clients to pay it? Well, I think now, now so more than ever that, you know, it's totally justifiable to put your prices up a little, a little bit more. I mean, you've got to be realistic. You can't go in there and be like, right, you cut blow dry is going to be 20, 30 pounds more than it normally is. Just have your normal, uh, you know, yearly increase, which I've, I've been speaking to some salon owners because they always ask me a lot about pricing and things like that for some reason. Um, and they are scared to do this price increase because we've had the lockdown and they've kind of client clients haven't been coming in they're not doing that yearly increase that they would do normally so for a start i would definitely recommend you still doing that because we're still going to be you know with our costs are still going up and things like that um but for us i think i mean we're still doing that but like I say, we are doing the, the post-COVID charge, which is fully justifiable uh, when you look at everything that goes in place and the safety and the PP and everything like that. Um, you know, it, it, I mean, not one person uh, questioned the safety charge, the post-COVID charge when we got back after lockdown, not one person. Um, but at the end of the day, like we are businesses, we still have to make a profit. We're not there to be breaking even and at a loss. We still need to make money. So if you're, you know, you have to look at your pricing and get down to the nitty gritty and think, right, am I actually making any money here? And if you're not, then obviously you need to put your prices up. Where obviously we're making money. I wouldn't be then going, oh, well, let's bang another 20 pound on it because of COVID and we just lost eight, eight months. You know, we've got to be, we have got to be realistic. But yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm quite confident about that because, you know, if you're a bit like, oh, you know, it's gone up five ten pound they're going to be they're going to be questioning it aren't they you know but if you're confident about your pricing and and things like that then you don't usually get any problems yeah it's not personal somebody's just said it's business and, and that's I think that's so true and there's also that supply and demand thing right guys there's going to be less salons I think we can all pretty much agree there will be less salons on opening the demand's going to be high the supply is going to be less so charge again we hear it all the time charge what you're worth and yeah. make the most of that. And yeah, it's not so you can laugh all the way to the bank, it's so that your business can remain on the high street. So be honest with your clients. And I think when you're putting up your prices, say what you're doing, you know, we're becoming a, an ecoethical salon, you know, all the things that you're doing, we've just spent a long time, months upskilling our staff and doing education, et cetera, et cetera. So sell them the benefits of that price increase and justify it as well. But at the end of the day, like you said, it's business and you guys need to make money if we want we want you there and they want you in in their community in good salons in their community so um yeah I love your confidence on that Nikki I think it's brilliant and I hope more people do that and I hope you impart that on some people that are listening now um Rob can you just go back to the question for me um it was about pricing wasn't it and then as usual I went off on a bit of a tangent um yeah, there we go. What changes do we make to client appointment? So um, let's go to Nick. Are there any changes to client appointment times and prices post lockdown for you, Nick, at Daniel Gray? Yeah, I think we've gone back to the original lockdown. Um, I think we're going to be taking longer because we need that time as we haven't seen them. We don't know what's coming into your chair. Um, I think we'll need that extra time to, well, with your consultation, making sure uh, you've maybe, if they've not been skin tested for whatever reason, you need a plan to, to come back in or and, and colour work. I think everything's just going to take that bit longer. I think last time the clients wanted to share with you their lockdown story as well. So you, you, it's that extra time and that care and listening to, to some of their stories. The better time you've sort of seen them out and bills and sterilising again, we're going to be taking more time. So I agree with Nikki. I think we've got no choice to, you know, we're skilled 
individuals doing the personal service and we we need to we need to be back on it and that takes time and money doesn't it you know and I think we've got to be realistic and confident moving forward and give that confidence to your team to say that they are actually worth it they're worth that money they're worth that time and clients I don't know if it was Charlie that said or Nikki I'm not sure um is that they will choose whether they want to come and pay them prices or they will choose to go somewhere else. But um, to be safe in your salon and clean and doing everything properly takes effort and systems. And I think that's what clients have to are buying into as well as, as, as anything else. So for me, I'm with Nikki and Charlie all the way and Caroline. So. And I think you're right when you just touched on, it's not just the clients you've got to kind of justify your price increases to through an amazing five-star service and make sure they enjoy the time in salon and the end result. But it's also the team. It's making sure your team are confident on guys. There is another price increase. This is the three key reasons why we're seeing less clients. Clients are having 10 extra minutes in the chair, et cetera, et cetera. So I think it's, you're right. You've got to justify it with your team because ultimately they're the one delivering on a daily basis of this is how much your, this is how much your services cost today. Yeah. I would like to start by saying thank you guys for um, the time you've given up today. It's been really great. We've had some really nice messages on the chat just saying we love your passion um thank you so much you've been really realistic yet very comforting for everybody who's watching um that's from nikki at tributes magazine so that's really nice i think everybody's really enjoyed it today i just want to finish off then by going round and just saying um maybe from each of you like one thing that you would say to focus on right now today regardless of what boris says regardless of what the other governments say um what would you what are your parting thoughts for our audience and let's start with you nick because i'm going to put you on the spot because you, <laughs> you're on the you're on the main screen definitely an individual work-life balance i think i'll get much more out of my team and myself uh, for the salon that's what i'm gonna look at moving forward so getting that work-life balance right. Nikki, what's, what's, what's your parting thought for us that you want to leave us all with? Get back in your salons. Utilise this time you've got now because you're never going to have it again, hopefully. Um, and just really, really get stuck in and um, enjoy the break as well while you can because when we get back to work, it's going to be very full on. Uh, look at everything that you're doing. You know, can we improve this? Can we do that? And just grab the ball by the horns and just make the use of the time you've got. Love it. Good. Yeah. Rather than yeah, trying to just wait it out, utilise the time we've got left. I need to start thinking more like that, I think. Thank you, Nikki. Charlie, over to you. Words of wisdom from the hair geek, please. Well, I think remembering that um, there's a there's a saying here that my, my mother taught me is that time and tide waits for no man. And it's very true. Every minute that clock ticks by, you just got to say to yourself, am I using my time wisely? Because it does disappear. And um, self-motivation and keeping that glass well and truly full or even brimming over. Love it. Thank you so much. And Caroline, lastly, from you. Uh, I would say motivation, get yourself motivated again through education, just find something, get the passion back because it can be lost when we're sitting at home. So educate yourself and just suck it all in and get ready for getting back on the floor. Yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. And that's what we said um, about this. Um, this whole chat today was all about we, we can see the finish line. We don't know the exact date for anybody yet. But we can see the finish line ahead of us. It's that last just bit now that we need to try and get through. So it's just digging deep, isn't it? And working out what's going to get you, your team, your business through to that finishing point, because we know we're going to be mad busy, hopefully back in the salons doing what? we all love to do and how lucky everyone is to work in this industry and we will get to actually work in it again at some point um so massive thank you guys it's been really really great speaking to you all and um yeah i just wish you the best of luck for that reopening day and i really hope it's april and not may but if it is like you've all said just utilize those extra few weeks um as much as as much as you can um everyone's just saying thank you so much for the time and inspiration and i agree thank you guys thanks so much for your time Thank you. Thank you. Bye. bye, Charlie. Bye, Nikki. Bye, everyone. Thank you for joining. You know, if nobody joined, we wouldn't do these sessions. And big love from the Weller family to all of you. And we will see you again at some point in 2021. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Every time I walk in 